see the, uh, I didn't allow links, right? So let's do, fix that. There we go. Ah, thanks everybody for being here. And, uh, you know, one of the things that, that is such a gift to me personally is by, by hosting this show, this, this moment, I step into an expectation of myself and I think other people have an expectations of me too. And it's, it's among, it's a, it's a high version of myself. And so it is, it is a huge part of my growth. Is, is is simply the expectation to be that. Not, I don't think, it's not an expectation like with pressure, like, you know, if I ever have a, have a bad day, I, people aren't like, huh, he's not very evolved. But there is this, um, I mean, that's why it's so, it's, it's being aware of the people around you and, and what their vibration is at, because you tend to, you know, either be pulled or elevated to the vibration that's around you. And, you know, the, the, the the expectation of you is part of that. Uh. Um, gosh, I'm having a real hard time with this. Some, this, this, this screen is messing me up. Um, All right, well, chat is being a little tough to me, so I can't go backwards and, and see what's going on. Um, a couple things, just announce many things. Uh, first off, the question of the day on the Facebook page is, what are the positives when a natural disaster happens? What, are, what, are, what is the cone to find uh, when, when things are falling apart? Uh, and then also, We've got a contest going on. Woo woo, Piratey uh, has, has set up a, a, a Huggoween. And I think the post is on the Facebook page. And so this is how it works. We want people to post or on their Facebook page, or if you don't do Facebook, send us. But if you don't have a Facebook page, then I can't imagine that you have internet. So I don't know who I'm talking to right now. Um, but post on your Facebook page a picture of you hugging someone, whether you or them or both of you are in costume. And so we're going to post those on the Facebook page, um, as well as send out some of those posters to to the to the the, the highlight the the best of the best ones. So we're going to send out some of these posters um, along the poster line. If you are one of those people that was excited to post those in your neighborhood. I finally got some shipping containers, so um, you can reach out to me or wait for an announcement on that, but uh, we have the ability to get those out. But there's a, right now there's the, the Huggoween co costume hug contest going. So post it. There's directions to, you know, on the page, but post it and tag Hug Nation so that we know it's there, and um, I think that would be fun. Of course, if you're exceptionally body painted, you might want to do a test hug on like a towel before you eh, spread the costume, spread the love. Um, oh, oh, and there's a, a special, if you want to absolutely guarantee that you get a, a poster, um, the, the, you, if you have, a, if you post a picture of yourself in a, um, a Halcyon costume, then uh, we will, well, the world will shudder in, uh, in excitement. But actually, that happened uh, over the weekend. I, I was told that there was someone in a, a Halcyon costume that was going around holding an ice cream cone and hugging people all over the party. So um, that's kind of thrilling to, to know that, uh, I think that's a great costume. I was. I have to. I'm thinking of what I'm going to wear tomorrow night, and maybe I will go as, as. Nah, it doesn't quite work that way. Although some people love it, like Christopher Walken. I bet he could go as Christopher Walken to a Halloween party, and people would be like, "Nice." 
Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, lots of, um, and just in general, if you're going to dress up, take a picture of you hugging. It'd be fun. Wouldn't it? Either hugging yourself or hugging somebody else. And we'll, we'll, we'll Huggoween is a, a special time of year for Hugnation because of the, the very special Halloween Hugnation that Grandpa and I did. And um, if you watch the TEDx talk, it ends with a video from a uh, Huggoween broadcast we did. Tonight, um, for the happy hour, I'm going to try to play a little bit more of footage from that special broadcast and, and maybe share some crazy Halloween costume from the past. You know, I went through a period of time before I was uh, deeply into Burning Man when uh, Halloween was my once a year opportunity to dress in drag. I, one year I had a girlfriend who encouraged me to dress in drag uh, to this party. She was going to go as like a cop and I went as a, you know, a woman. I had long hair at the time. And I shit you not, I got more attention that night from women than I ever have in my entire life. Women were hitting on me. They were, I mean, I don't know if it's like this inner bisexual that, that, that's, that, that people are able to express or if it's that, oh my gosh, he's so comfortable with, I don't know. But it was so magic that I dressed like a woman for the next five Halloweens. Not only that, I would look for other times a year when it would be appropriate to dress up in drag. I mean, I, I know that, that, that there's many people that are transgendered and are, uh, 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 cross-dressing, that it's just part of who they are. But, you know, I meant things that I could do it and have this reaction from women. Um, I did try to dress up in drag once for Mardi Gras. Uh, not, not, not so successful. No, not, not so much. It's funny how drag on Halloween, sexy. Drag any other time, creepy. At least that's the, the default world stereotypical thing. I, you know, I don't mean to say that it actually is creepy because I think if you're expressing yourself in any way, it's fucking awesome. And if that means you... In, in fact, if you haven't seen it yet, there is a... Um, this isn't cross-dressing, but there's a, a video uh, that has been going around. Um, the, one of the brother, Wachowski brothers, the directors of, of The Matrix, is, been, is a male-to-female uh, uh, transgendered woman. And so, uh, she did a, a talk, you know, a, a kind of a coming out talk uh, to this, a couple weeks ago, maybe it was a week ago, that was so awesome and so courageous and so beautiful. And you can really, if, if, you, if you're, if you have any kind of misunderstanding about what that means to be, you know, a woman born as a man, her talk is just beautiful and, 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 and uh, she's a good example of, of uh, someone who is just following their truth in a, in a really beautiful way. Um, let's see. Um, there's a couple of things I was going to talk about. Um, I'm glad that they need to use power tools at this time of week. It makes everything into a challenge. Um, uh, Creeping Jenny is going in drag. Uh, I don't know if it, how well it works with 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 uh, women dressing as men. That's a good question. I know that um, I don't know if men are as as comfortable in their hitting on. Well, I, 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 should, I guess there's a, a certain closeted population that would be ripe for the pickings. Um, Miss Dredd said her 15-year-old has been secretly cross-dressing. Wow. Fantastic. Well, I mean, fantastic that, 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 that any child at that age is, is in tune with their true self to that degree, even when it is at odds with the culture. I think that is a, um, it is a recipe for adolescent struggle, but lifetime joy. So good luck as a parent to that. Thank you. you like, this, is, this is a thrift sco store score. It's, um, it's finally cool enough to wear anything but sleevelessness um, in the studio here. Um,
Yeah, we. <laughs> I got to hang out this weekend with my brother and uh, some of our friends that we've all known each other since we were about five or six years old. And we dressed up many Halloweens together, and they were definitely chuckling at how many times that I was in drag uh, during Halloweens. But that's the great thing about old friends is they uh, they see you with your puppy. They might not trust you with a you know a puppy in heat, but no, I'm kidding. I've never had to think about it. No, never. The problem with bestiality is consent. You know, if if the horse goes, is that a yes or is that just? A, and was there a fly around? It's so hard to tell. With then again, is a wagging tail consent? Not that I've ever thought about these things before. Actually, I have thought about these things. There was, um, I remember seeing this, this, uh, this article. Maybe I should even record this. Yeah. Um, it was a thing in the newspaper about this, this, this family that there's something was going weird with their dog. Every time the gardener had come for a visit, their dog was acting all crazy afterwards. And so finally they set up a secret camera and realized that their gardener was having sex with their dog. And, you know, of course, that's, I mean, that's, that's pretty shocking. And it's shocking for, for, for a number of reasons, but the one that I find the most baffling is that, let's say you are attracted to dogs. If there are, are county agencies that have kennels full of dogs, that if you wanted to, you could adopt and, 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 you know, make your bitch. Why would you go, I mean, if there was a county agency that had just rows and rows of big-breasted brunettes that I could just take home with a minor adoption fee and leave in a cage, okay, maybe I'm going down a bad path. My point is, uh, he ruined a good thing. And if there is a county agency that, never mind. All right, I'm going to move on. Um, along those lines, as long as I've crossed the line, um, if, if I ever do uh, decide to, say, um, have sex with somebody's dog or um, touch a child inappropriately or anything that's really horrific like that, I'm going to make sure that I bring two or three circus animals with me. So that way, in case, you know, the kid ever testifies, we can be like, so you're saying there was a giraffe in the room? No more questions, Your Honor. Too, too much? Too far? Okay, I'll pull it back. Did I mention that um, I've had too much coffee today? And I've never had sex with um, any circus animals. Heavy petting, yes, but never penetration. All right, one more topic. <laughs> what time is it? One forty. So, um, something kind of cool happened to me. Um, about a year ago, uh, there was some people. I had a gathering here, and um, I was actually one stop on a many stop kind of bike drink thing that people were doing. Like a, and so they stopped here. We they had a bunch of drinks and food, and then moved on. And as after they left, my my phone was missing, and so I tracked them down. Everybody that was part of it I was like, "Hey, did anyone accidentally pick up my iPhone?" You know, and no, no, no. And I was like, uh, "Are you sure?" Because you know, a lot. I mean, very easy to accidentally pick it up. Can everyone just check and make sure that you've got your own phone? I'm like. And uh, it never turned up. Looked through everything, looked through all my stuff, you know, and and, and it was uh, <sighs> to be honest, I had moments of doubt and judgment, you know. I had definitely had the thought in my head of like, it's, who took my phone? And I'm a little, well, more than a little embarrassed uh, because my neighbor. My new neighbor found my phone out in the bushes a couple weeks ago, and he just gave it to me. Now, the cool part of the story is that I 
took it out of the crusty, dirty case it was in, plugged it in, and it charged up. So, um, I lead a charmed life. Everybody, I lead a charmed life. Um, somebody, when I posted that story, someone in the, in the comments was like, oh man, that's, you know, you are so lucky, you know, man, you just, you know, things just always work out for you. And I said, you know, if you compliment a chef, they will want to cook for you again and again. And the universe works the same way. And so as I practice and cultivate gratitude, it simply makes sense to me that good thing would keep happening and happening because the grand chef is like, oh, he likes it. Okay, let me go. I'm going to make you something nice. Very nice, just for you. Um, and maybe it was because I had, you know, I, the, the phone wouldn't turn up until I finally, you know, had forgiveness for all those that uh, I thought took my phone. Interesting. Interesting how the lessons come fast and furious sometimes. So, all right, I admit I'm having a little trouble with the chat, so my apologies if something important has happened here. What kind of coffee is this? This is a, a extremely heavily creamed by using death creamer, as I like to call it, the Coffee Mate pure chemical concoction. Uh, it has trace dairy in it, I've, I've learned. So it's actually not vegan because it has trace dairy, um, but it's, uh, it's some hazelnut coffee with a bunch of creamer. Um, Oh yeah. Okay. So, I I I have a TV show in development, and in development is a, a Hollywood term that means basically you've had a conversation with somebody about it. It's a very vague term. It doesn't mean much at all. But I have been working with the producer, and they have been putting together a synopsis, and we have been trying to cast for the pilot and you know some additional shows. Uh, that is kind of a a life coaching style thing where I someone has some challenge and struggle and then I will try to help them through it. So we're trying to find the right people to film at least the pilot and maybe, you know, hopefully more if someone wants to finance it. Um, but it's funny because, you know, people get so excited when I say I have a TV show in development and, and I actually am not that excited and I realize that you know, maybe that I should, should give a little backstory on my experiences with television. Um, when I was in, uh, right after I won the Webby, uh, before the first dot-com bubble burst, there was all this talk that, that TV and internet were going to converge. And, you know, we actually are now in that place where that's kind of happening. But at the time, you know, that was, that was you know, it was this new thought that was going to be happening. And because I just won Best Personal Site for Cocky Bastard, there was, there was this agency that was like, we, we we want to fly you into Hollywood and and have some meetings with you and I'm like fucking awesome and you know they're like at the time their big client was RuPaul and so they saw me as a similar type of personality and I was like yeah sweet they're like do you sing I'm like no do you do this no do you act no do you, what do you do um I'm me and so but very soon after that uh, they the dot-com bubble, oh, no, no, while this is happening, about this time is happening, um, I was working at College Club, and they also realized, oh my gosh, TV and internet are going to, so um, I was with Dimitri and some other people, we convinced the company that we should film, we should, we should get into production, and so we filmed a pilot of a show called Hot Tub TV, and the premise of that was that when you're wet, and mostly naked, and it's hot, and you're within a, in a tub full of people, you have these really deep, intimate conversations, even with strangers. And so we want to make a talk show that happened in a hot tub. And of course, it lends itself well to, to getting sexy people together and not wearing much. So we, we, I was the host. We did this big casting. 
you know, interviewed tons of people and filmed like a pretty high budget uh, pilot. It had, you know, motion graphics and it was really cool. And it didn't go anywhere. And the agency thing didn't go anywhere. But one thing that I learned or that happened was when I was with the Hot Tub TV stuff, I was so excited about being on television that I was eager. And so when the, the, the producers of the show would make suggestions or we're going to do this, then we're going to do this, I was like, sure, okay, okay, you're the, you know, whatever you say. So, you know, they would say things like, we're going to go to this big club opening and you're going to have an entourage with you and try to create this buzz that you're this, you know, I'm like, all right, okay. And, you know, looking back, I'm just like, how oh, embarrassing. And I was, my thought was, I'll do whatever they say because I want to maximize my, my, my chances of this actually succeeding and getting on TV. And what I realized eventually is that most of these things don't get on TV. So, in fact, if they do, it would probably be because you stayed in integrity, not because you did whatever it took to get on TV. And so I realized if, if the chances of being on TV is small, might as well just stay in integrity and then if it happens it would be a beautiful thing that I would be proud of and not just like yay I'm famous or something so fast forward I don't know, maybe six or seven years later and a friend of mine that I'd known online for a long time was working on NBC uh, and NBC.com and they started they all the, the, a new wave of things oh we're gonna start launching shows on the internet and if they're popular we will cross them over and, and make them into TV shows. And so they had a show that they were, they were building called Fears, Regrets, Desires that was kind of a confessional type show where um, people would share these, these confessions and then, um, I mean, part of the draw was to make it like really tawdry. My pitch then was like, it can be this great tool for showing how we're all like and that everyone has these, cr I mean, it's kind of like, like post-secret where people sometimes share these insane secrets but you redo it, and, and the big thing is that so many people share these fears or these habits or these situations, and that these secrets that make us feel like we're all alone in the world is actually what ties us all together. We all have these things that 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 we struggle with that makes us human. And so that should I, would, I did a weekly show. It was a like a podcast. So I, I I hosted it and I you know filmed it myself, and then I would send it to them, and they would edit it. And then they, we did like 34 weeks, I think. So, you know, these weekly episodes. And right when we launched it, um, the economy tanked and, and they, they were like, okay, so we just cut the marketing budget for the show. So could, we're going to lean on you to use your network to try to get this show off the ground. I'm like, what? Uh, this NBC is going to ask uh, me to like push my live journal audience to, to, to turn this into a success. So clearly it did not become a success, um, at least in terms of views. It was a cool experience and it was awesome to have NBC on my, on my resume. But the flashback before that, when I went to the audition, I, I mean, I, the way they did it, they, they, they auditioned a, a number of um, like actors and then the, 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 the big producers asked my friend, they said, we should have some real you know, video bloggers actually audition to see if they would be a good match. And so they had me come in with a, another uh, awesome woman, Wikipedia, who, um, and, and so we kind of went in and, and after this experience with trying so hard to be whatever they wanted me to be and it being a bust, I realized that the only way I want to do this is if I could be an in integrity. So I kind of went in and was like, this is me, you know? I'm like, if you Google too long, you're gonna find naked pictures of me online. Um, I don't know how to act, I can't pretend to be anything, but if you're looking for exactly this, I can be me in amazing ways. And they're like, we like this. It's gritty, it's real. All right, you're hired. And then they offered to pay me like nothing because they're like, what are you talking about? You're a video blogger. You, you should be paying us to be on NBC. I'm like, that's a good point. The last thing on my resume is uh, working for a porn company. So putting NBC at the top of my resume is probably worth a lot. So actually I had an agent uh, at the time because of this, you know, and he was like, dude, this, 
walk away from the deal. I'm like, yeah, but I really want to work for NBC and have my own show. And they're like, he's like, all right, well, take it, but do it for your own reasons. And I'm like, okay. So, so now, you know, oh, and then, so then I'm just giving you a, a history, my history with, with TV stuff. So then about four years ago, I was contacted by a San Diego based production company that was really cool heart centered people and they had a bunch of shows in development and we met a few times and pitched a, and, and kind of brainstormed some show ideas and so as they went around to the networks and pitched some of their other ideas they um, they pitched some that involved me and um, you know, it's a lot of the lessons of that was just that it's it's the way that the TV industry works is they say okay we want something totally unique but we don't want to take any risks so give us something that's already working in another show but you know so that's why everything is it's you know survivor with puppets you know or it's this with this it's you know um one of the the, the show ideas that we pitched at the time you know i was just grandpa had just passed and so the the the, the kind of like you know he's you know, after a chapter in the adult industry and working in pornography, he spent time with his minister grandfather. Now his grandfather is gone and he's going out into the world in the pink bus and what will he do? Which path will he follow? Follow him as he's in the missionary position. Huh? Clever? I don't know. No, no lamer than anything else on TV. But, um, uh, so that ended it was a cool experience, but you know, no one no one was no one bit. At the time they were like, uh, he seems like an interesting guy, but he's nowhere near popular enough to base a show around. Like even if the shows were interesting, we wouldn't want him as the host. So I was like, okay. So then when the Ted X thing happened, that triggered uh, a few people to think, maybe he's maybe he's a big enough person now to actually try to pitch him again. So um, in the process now, I just saw the kind of synopsis for the show that they put together with all these cool pictures of me doing cool things, looking like I'm a somewhat normal guy at times and a preacher at other times and a charity worker at other times. It actually makes me look far better than I am. I'm going to carry around a copy of it and give to police when they pull me over. So I, I, am, I am excited about the journey. I am not attached by any means to the outcome. When people are like, oh my gosh, I hear you have a TV show. I'm like... Oh, I'm 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 having an adventure that involves trying to create a TV show. Uh, that's probably a more accurate way to say it. So I'm trying to share as much as I can, so we can you know have an adventure together. Wee! Um, do I have Instagram? I do not. Well, I do. No, wait, do I have Instagram? No, I have Pinterest. Although I should get Instagram because I, I, the reason why I don't like Twitter is because I can't post any pictures. All right, I'll, Instagram I do with my phone, right? I'll do that. Okay, so tonight I'm gonna go over the answers to the question of the day. If you still wanna answer that, um, it's on the Facebook page. It's. Uh, what are the positives or what's the cone and when disaster strikes? Um, yeah. Other exciting, I mean, just in, uh, just, I'll just touch this and maybe talk um, more tomorrow. I mean, tonight is, uh, um, I'm thinking about getting a Hugmobile 2.0. Uh, the Hugmobile had all sorts of car problems yet again. Going to the last festival, it's it's you know broken down on seven of the last thirteen journeys, um, which, while I love it all the same, it still it, it, it ends up you know I, I'm there's a certain anxiety when you set off on a ten to sixteen hour drive um, without a ton of confidence in in the in the vehicle. So I'm exploring either buying something newer or sinking a bunch of money into it. I mean, the problem is that I've, I've tried. It's, it's more of a diagnostic problem than a, than a 
the resources. You know, like if, if I knew what it was to fix Huggy, I would I would do it because like to to get a dependable one is going to be like 15, 20, 30 grand. Whereas if I could sink three, four grand into Huggy and make it awesome, that would be that'd be fine. Because the, the new Huggy, I gotta repaint it, hire another artist, refer the inside. I mean, on one hand, that sounds a lot of fun, but we'll see. And then the problem is, or the, the struggle, is if I'm going to get something new, there's so many options. Like, like Dimitri just got a cargo van, like a badass camper van, um, which means you can park it on the street. It's, it, it is a, easier to drive, more dependable. Um, there's also, you know, if I, some people are saying, you know, get a, a, a bigger RV, that way when you go to these festivals, it's like having a one-bedroom apartment. I drive mine around so much on city streets currently that over 26 feet seems just right now I want to, I basically like to have a newer version of what I have. That's, that's, that's my current dream situation. I also want to get a class A because I'm attached to the visual. I've all, the vision I always had of the wheel was always a, a class A, which is a flat front one, not a truck front one. This is probably more information than you need. <sighs> Yeah, maybe we'll, maybe it'll be part of the, t the TV show. Well, I, I kind of was thinking that maybe I should hold off, and just in case we sell this show, um, if I made some money off that, then that's that would decide what kind of RV I got. You know, I, I, I did mention that, you know, I am doing some coaching, and actually I put in a bid yesterday for some consulting, but my current economic situation is, uh, is one of depleting my resources. Um, as the cop pointed out, someday I may have to grow up and get a real job. But I don't want to make my—I don't want to buy something that then just forces me to go get a, you know, a, a nine-to-five. So you can feel my pain. You've had a cargo van your whole life. That's awesome. Um, there's <sighs> cargo vans are sweet. Um, there's something that one of the reasons that I, that I that I was leaning against a cargo van is that I I really like how the current the the RV that I have now when I bring it to festivals and things, especially as part of the theme camp, I have so many resources with me. I have so many like drawers filled with zip ties and um, I mean there's so many things that when people need it I'm like I, I, I think I got that I think I got that I think I have that um, of course if it's something mechanical I have to say I have no idea you're gonna have to look in this drawer and tell me if that's whatever you're looking for whereas a cargo van I mean a camper van is, is a, a it's a much more compact use of space and usually the beds are like um, either smaller or they're um, you know, up high, and, you know, I don't mean to get too personal, but I like a lot of room, because I don't just sleep there. <sighs> a t a t okay, so, so Creepy Jenny says, what about towing a trailer? And there's, the, there's pros and cons to that, too. One is, the, the pro is that I, could, I, I would have to buy a truck of some sort, or a small trailer, I may be able to tow with my current car, but I don't love my current car. It's an SUV. Um, but I, I get it by truck, and then the, the mechanical aspect of it breaking down would be dependent on the truck. So I could always get a nicer truck or rent a nice truck or, um, uh, you know, that, that, that I could beef up the trailer and make an awesome Airstream. And then as it got older and older and older, I wouldn't have, you know, it, the, the truck could be replaced um, as opposed to, you know, the RV you can't, like, my, the situation I'm in right now is I bought too cheap an RV to start. So I put all this investment and time and money on top of this cheap, beat-up vehicle. Um, you could put all that time into a, a, a trailer. There's a few things that I don't like about trailers. One, um, I don't think it's as visually as cool. I think that the, 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 the Hugmobile driving through traffic is a more 
powerful artistic statement to me than a painted trailer. Um, also, I've heard that driving a trailer is way harder than driving a motorhome. Especially backing up, but even anything that, that a trailer is, is a much more challenging thing. Like you can't go over 55 on, on most roads. Um, not that you go that much faster in an RV, but even so. Um, and and that I current well, I currently use a uh, Huggy you know monthly for for help the homeless, which is this weekend by the way. Oh my gosh, I'm glad I mentioned that. Um, so if anyone's in San Diego or San Francisco or British Columbia, there's for Saturday's happening this weekend. But, um, yeah, so a uh, trailer's still a possibility, but, um, I don't know. It's so hard. That's what I mean. That's, that's why, like, as of, as of yesterday, my, my dream vehicle is a, exactly what I have now, except, like, a 2000 or, or newer. Of course, that's crazy expensive, but, but hey, man, I got a TV show in development. Okay, um, I am so glad we had this hour together. I am thrilled. Yeah, I, I had some trouble with chat, so I tried to read what I could. But if there's something that you wanted me to to notice or see or had a question I want to read, please send me an email or send me a uh, Facebook message. Um, also, we're still casting the show. Um, I posted on my Facebook as well as lifestudent.com the kind of questions. So if you have interest in being coached by me, um, feel, please send in, you know, answer those questions and, and send in to me if you want to be on the show. Um, you know, the reality is for until we get funded, we're not going to film outside of Southern California. So if you're far away, you could still send it in and we could, you know, put you on, put, you know, say that, oh, we're going to do a later episode as we pitch it, but, uh, it, you know, it's not going to happen right away. Other than that, happy Halloween, or should I say, Huggoween. Um, hopefully, see some pictures of you guys with hugs in the next uh, day or two, and maybe see some people tonight for happy hour. Thank you for sharing this moment. It is a treat, a joy. I appreciate the expectations we have one another and the vibration that we create as we elevate together. The expectations of group. Exactly, vibration. Oh, I love you. Have an amazing day.